2007 City Golf, uh, which is a Mark IV A4 Golf uh, cooling system performance malfunction. Bad thermostat. Verified that through test drive. 80 degrees. Um, I, I, I left the car idling up until about 85 degrees. Then I went driving, cruising at a steady speed, and it temperature dropped below 78 degrees. Verifying that the thermostat staying open too long. You don't need to lift the vehicle, but you do need to be able to get a drip tray under there. You can see my green drip tray. Open this reservoir cap slowly if it's under pressure. You want to feel for pressure. Working on a cold engine is easier, safer. Drain the block by disconnecting one of the oil cooler hoses. There's two hoses, two hose clamps, whichever one is easier to get to. Use a hose pick tool to uh, loosen the hose from the oil cooler. And just work the tool around the hose to free it. Once it's free, you can use a pry bar to lever the hose off. And then just let it drain. The thermostat is located right here. I like to blow the dirt away from around the thermostat. Some people remove the alternator for greater visibility, better access. Not need it, but uh, do so if you want to. Uh, 13 millimeter bolt here and a 13 millimeter bolt down here but you have to move the uh, tensioner here uh, to get at everything correctly because you want to take the belt off so in order to unload the belt 16 millimeter wrench here just move it over and uh, take the belt off and then three mounting bolts for the tensioner I'll link another video where you can see me doing that if I can find the video. There's one bolt for the thermostat flange. I have to move my trip tray over. My drip tray, not my trip tray. <laughs> It's a 14 inch, 3 eighths, uh, quarter inch extension, and that's a 10 millimeter snap on universal or swivel socket. Telescoping magnet. And you can lift the flange up and out of the way. Pick, loosen the o-ring and then remove the thermostat. I like to remove as much coolant from the engine as possible so that uh, the coolant does not overflow and contaminate or make or yeah contaminate the new thermostat and o-ring when it position them so that everything stays nice and dry. coolant out of the mounting bolt holes. Dry the area with a rag. Yeah, I 
always lower the radiator hose to let it drain as well. The reason I drain the lower hose is so that when I go to position it on the thermostat, there is no coolant that comes out which will contact the thermostat and or o-ring and uh, causes any it causes, which can cause some issues with the sealant that I'm going to put on Volkswagen says not to use any sealant so it's up to you whether you do or not Make sure that the block is still nice and dry. If you want, you can stick your finger in here and uh, try to move the water pump pulley. This one looks like it still has a plastic impeller. So you just stick your finger in here and you try to move the pump. Don't be forceful because it is a plastic impeller seems to be tight. Position the thermostat. Be careful. There's an there's a ridge that it sits in. If, if it sits crooked, cockeyed, you're gonna have leaks. So feel feel for the ridge. Make sure it's sitting flush. I put a sealant on I put a little bit of sealant on the outer edge of the flange. doesn't need much and I put a little bit of sealant where the o-ring is positioned position the o-ring and then I move distribute the silicone around the o-ring I'm going to put some anti seize on the bolts. To keep the bolt in place, I use an old glove and push the bolt in like this. Stuzman52, another, another great YouTuber, also known by Terry or known as Terry. Um, he had a great tip about using um, what, what was it called masking tape put put a strip of masking tape across the socket put the push the bolt in or the nut and then it'll hold it in place uh, this is a convenient way for me to do it uh, if you have masking tape around feel free to use it and sometimes if there's excessive so, sometimes if there's excessive glove here then uh, I trim it so it doesn't get caught under the uh, bolt. Yeah, even if it does, it does, it's not really a big deal. Okay, with the bolt ready to go in, and with the O-ring in position, slowly, slowly lower the uh, flange into place. If you're not careful, you can disturb the thermostat, and it'll it'll move from its seat. So you just gently position the flange to where the bolt holes line up and then you start the bolts and you and basically let the bolts pull the flange into position and you, you don't want to tighten one bolt completely without doing the other one so what I do is I just 
start the flange like this, you can still still see there's a gap. At this point, I remove the uh, socket and I start the other bolt. Just need to get my glove. position the lower bolt and don't force it if everything is lined up the bolt should just go in by finger pressure and evenly work them back and forth until the flange is sitting flush Don't go nuts, nuts with these bolts. Uh, should only take about 15 newton meters to tighten them. You can see the uh, flange is sitting flush, and the little bit of silicone that I used is just an added sealant or a, a, a bit of insurance to keep leaks from occurring little OCD here that one's tight that one's tight don't forget the uh, cooler hose don't forget the clamp just wiggle the, hose, uh, wiggle the clamp back into place if it doesn't want to move, just use your other hand and help the clamp out from underneath. Okay, even I have trouble sometimes, or I should say most of the times. Okay, clamp is in place. You can feel the oil cooler pipe here, so it's definitely sitting past it. It doesn't have to sit way, way against the cooler, just as long as it's past the ridge here. Now we can fill the system again. 50-50 is ideal for most countries. You don't need a fancy vacuum bleed fill machine. As long as... Uh, you're careful, you can fill a system like this. Try not to spill too much. You're probably going to need four to six liters of coolant. It all depends on how much you drained out. Or if you're fixing a leak, uh, you obviously don't know how much came out. So basically you just fill until the level doesn't drop anymore. To help the, uh, to help the fluid go into the engine, what I like to do is I pump the hoses. That helps create a siphon effect. This is the bleeder hose right here. Runs over here to the bottle. As fluid goes down into the engine and the radiator, air gets pushed out, up and out into the bottle. If that bleeder hose is plugged, air cannot come out of the engine, the fluid level won't drop, and you might only get maybe two or three liters of fluid into the uh, reservoir, uh, at which point uh, you think that the fluid is uh, the, the system is full, but it's not, and once you start the engine, it'll start overheating because there's air in the engine. So you want to make sure that this hose is clear. Uh, remove the hose and blow into it. If you see a change in fluid level, that tells you that the hose is clear. If you if you have a difficulty if you have difficulty blowing into the hose and the the level does not change or you don't see any bubbles, then uh, look for a restriction either in the hose here 
it goes over to the throttle body and then it comes over here I think there's a T there's a T piece here there could be a restriction in this T piece so you want to do everything you can uh, to make sure that the system is clear and free you see it's still dropping and when I push the hoses I can, I can hear the gurgling once you have enough fluid in the system you can start the engine uh, turn the heater on high um, the heater core is a constant it's an open system so it always gets uh, hot coolant at all the time but the reason you want high heat and open up the vents here is so that you can monitor actual heat if you don't get any heat and the temperature starts to climb you have an air pocket uh, in the system or and the pump isn't circulating the coolant or the the uh, pump is broken and that's why it's not circulating so turn the heater to high close all the vents except for the one at the door and turn the uh, directional flap to the door with the engine running and the water pump pumping fluid will drop again so always monitor fluid level keep keep adding fluid I usually just go to the seam putting back through the return hose so we have good flow and uh, most of the air is already out rinse off any spilled coolant there's a drain hole right here so it'll drain out the back rinse off the spilled coolant at the oil cooler and the old coolant around the th uh, thermostat housing okay level is staying steady right now we still have good flow which is good you can put the cap on at this point To make it easy to turn the cap, I usually put a bit of silicone compound on here. Always monitor the temperature gauge. You want to make sure that uh, it doesn't go past the middle point. And obviously monitor heat. I'm feeling a little bit already. Raise the engine RPM a little bit uh, to help speed up the warm-up process. It doesn't need much, 1500, 2000 RPM. You want to start making sure to check for leaks, also check for leaks, anything and everything that you disconnected, you want to make sure it's, it's not leaking. And what I always do, also do is monitor via the engine temperature, uh, sorry, via, via the engine coolant temperature sensor, uh, via the ECM. What I like to do is uh, monitor engine coolant temperature via the scan tool. 72 degrees. New thermostat will uh, warm up quicker. So we're just going to watch the temperature in short term. Coolant level is still okay. I have good temperature inside the car so I can turn the blower off so that the engine warms up quicker because you, if you're taking heat away inside the car that's that's taking heat away and the engine will take a little bit longer to warm up and my um, 
objective right now is to make sure that the thermostat opens and that the fans come on so I want that to happen as quick as possible so that the, the car can go out uh, of the shop. There's still no leaks anywhere. I can put the cover back on. <coughs> Blue level still okay. Lower hose is still cold, upper hose is getting quite warm, 84 degrees, 86 degrees. At this point the lower hose would have been warm already because the thermostat was opening too early. It's still nice and cold right now. Ninety degrees at this point the temperature will start to stabilize for a while uh, as the thermostat is opening up and the cold coolant goes into the engine you want to make sure that this fuse is okay this is the fuse for the radiator fans if the fingers are uh, burnt replace the fuse and or the fuse holder Make sure all these nuts are tight. You can feel for hot spots, just put your fingers on the connect on the nuts. They should be cold to the touch. A little bit of warmth is okay, especially on the alternator cable. This black one is the alternator cable. But if you can't hold your finger on it uh, because of the heat, there's a bad connection. You're going to have to uh, take the nut off and clean the connection uh, or replace the fuse holder. These are all good. Still at 90 degrees. The lower hose is now getting warm. Once the lower hose is the same temperature as the upper, then the uh, overall temperature is going to climb some more uh, and then the fan should come on at around 96 to 98 degrees. Ninety-three degrees, so that lower radiator hose and the thermostat are, are starting to. Uh, well, the thermostat is open, and the fact that it's now climbing further than 90, 92 uh, means that the radiator is equalizing in terms of temperature with the engine, and then uh, it's going to start climbing some more until the fans come on. Ninety-four right now. Yeah, the lower hose is nice and warm equally hot as the top and you can see the steam coming off of the radiator from the water that I used to wash down and that indicates that the radiator is fully getting warmed up the radiator fan switch is over here uh, fans just came on 96 degrees so we have a good we have a good thermostat we have a good radiator fan switch we have good flow both fans are working all done. Uh, shut the engine off, park the vehicle, let it cool down, and top up the fluid if it needs if you need to. Thanks for watching.